Hi, I'm YouTuber Ryan Knows Tech and JRS Vlog from our tech blog, techinform.us. I've got another channel going here. You've obviously found it. It is E39 Source. Uh, I know from uh, my other technology channel, Ryan Knows Tech, I have that linked all over this channel. Uh, I had a lot of videos, actually like four, but I would like to be making a lot of videos about the upgrades I do to this car. This is a 2000 M5, obviously from the E39 series of five series. Uh, so the purpose of this channel, I really hope to create a, almost like a board or a forum where uh, E39 and similar E46 and maybe even some E34 owners can come and and uh, we can talk about these cars and upgrades and stuff and uh, please post video responses if you guys have any um, does not have to be an E39 I'd, I'd just like to create a video community here where uh, we can help each other out maybe finding parts having service done anything having to do with these cars I know now more than ever uh, there are tons of people uh, buying these because there's such great deals this one uh, set me back 12.9 I've got over 23 in it as of now it's 153,000 miles. The purpose of this video is just an introductory welcome if you're at all interested in creating a video forum for these cars and uh, similar. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll have uh, hopefully a, a lot of video responses. I, I may let um, other owners upload videos to this channel or uh, we'll figure out how we can make that work. So being from Ohio, we have less than ideal weather. I wanted to make this video and it was nice outside and I could go clean it up, put it at the park and have fun with it. Well, that, that isn't what happened. Uh, this, is, this is my garage and that, this is what we usually have here uh, south of Cleveland, Ohio. But um, we'll start up here in the front. This is the 2000, meaning it, those, are, those are not stock headlights. As well, you may have noticed my uh, bumper does not have the windshield or the headlight washer things in them. Those are not original fog lights. My license plate thing is gone that the previous owner of this vehicle put on in like 2001 or something. Uh, that's because I had a, lo a lot of work actually done to the front of this vehicle. I had the entire hood repainted as well as a new bumper due to tons of stone chips and stuff underneath and well it wasn't in good shape. That was repainted. And then both of the front fenders were redone as well. These headlights are not OEM uh, as they were way too expensive so if you get up close you are going to see five uh, LEDs or whatever light source they do use in there. Uh, all M5s came with xenon lights and I'd like to reiterate uh, at this point if you've got a 525 or a 523 welcome to the channel man subscribe that is an awesome car I'm not gonna be the prick that is only gonna work with M5 owners you know the, the M5 is way expensive to maintain and I uh, really respect the 520s and over in Europe and the 23s and the 25s that I see around here all the time. Mostly around here, they're 528s and 540s. Um, so that was the work that I did in the front. I have not had anything done back here. Everything should be pretty much stock. Um, take a look inside, actually. I have to get over to the driver's door. I don't have the key on me right now. This is the only one that's unlocked. I'll um, go over that mileage. I am going to need the key for that. Just a second. So this one's got 153,957. Uh, as you can see, it definitely suffers from the typical E39 screwed up pixels down there. That is supposed to say time 7.02 p.m. Kind of looks like IE02, some jibber jabble. So uh, if anybody knows of any cheap fix for that, let me know. This is what's going to be awesome about this channel. Maybe I can help you find uh, things that you've wanted to do in yours, and maybe you can return the favor and help me out with this one. But uh, the only thing that I have found for this is taking the entire dash out and sending it to somebody on eBay. It's like 300 bucks. Uh, plus getting that, apparently it's not the actual screen because sometimes those work. As I go through the different things here, you'll see um, it isn't the pixels. It's got to be the data cable or whatever computer controls this is just messed up. Uh, so I obviously have the, uh, the sport premium trim or whatever they call it. I'll try to shed some more light on the subject with my... <laughs> There's lights over here. I apologize. This is not the best lighting, but I do have the aluminum trim or whatever it looks like aluminum all over the place. Um, in the back, too. The back is in pretty good shape. I've got the other seats, too, with the gray inserts over the black. I think they used an 03. Um, a couple things down here. This is not OEM. I just did this about 
maybe a month and a half ago. It used to be the other one, you know, it ch I had a big chip in it, and then all that material flaked off. I found this one off, I believe, NCS Tuning. If you want to see a video of where I found it, what it cost, how to put it in, how to make it fit the other wiring that the 2000s used, I should mention production of this car is 2 of 2000. So February of 2000, this thing rolled out the line. Uh, so that is um, one of the upgrades that I've done. Another upgrade I really want to do is this. This looks terrible. It looks like a water spot. That doesn't come off. This is just beat to hell. I cannot find this piece anywhere. I know that the trim is expensive. Uh, I found it all over eBay for six, seven, eight hundred dollars or more. Maybe the iPhone light would help in this situation. Um, very expensive, and it still doesn't come with this piece, which quite frankly pisses me off. Uh, I'd like to ultimately replace this entire piece of trim as well as the door, uh, but this piece is not nearly as bad as the door, as you can see. Another thing, I actually ordered it today, is this e-brake handle. This is the original one with the car. It looks pretty bad. Uh, maybe if I turn off the light, you'll be able to see less of a reflection. It is completely shiny chrome here, and it's still that matte chrome tight, or, uh, satin finish, whatever it is over there. It, it's really rough. It does not look good. Um, so I ordered a piece off of Amazon, 75 bucks. It says genuine E46, E39, and Z3 uh, e-brake handle. I'm not looking for... It's not the one that's on here now, and it's not the leather one they used in 2001 and on, because personally I, I like the, the metal look over the leather look for that. But uh, I figured out how to put it on. It turns out this thing is just glued on. So the other day I came in here, torqued it like that, and I've got it loose now, so... Uh, the boot here is actually zip-tied onto the handle, and then the handle is glued on to what's under this, including this piece. So I will have, uh, that'll probably be my first video, going over how to install a, a new handle in this if you don't want to replace the entire thing that goes back down into the car. Another thing you probably noticed, I do not have the upgraded uh, display here, the 16x9 one. Really, I don't use it that much. I use it for the onboard computer to get my fuel consumption and stuff. Um... Really, that's it. I don't really use it for the GPS. I'm using my iPhone 4 and soon to be 5 right now for that. So, you know, that's that's not the biggest issue. And it's very expensive to put that in because you have to go into the trunk as well and um, and replace some stuff in there. And it's just way too much money for, for what it's worth to me. One of the popular things a lot of people um, search for about on forums with this car is how do I get my iPod or my iPhone to play in here? There's, at least on the 2000s, uh, there's no way to make that work unless you use an FM transmitter. So, I went over here, if you see that blue light in there, that is a small Bluetooth FM transmitter that I got a flashlight jack, you know, your rechargeable flashlight thing in here, uh, it goes from that flashlight to this, your car uh, power thing. So I plug that in there, that's only active when the engine's on. When my, it's called the TuneLink Auto, I'll make a review of that later on, most likely. Whenever that gets power, which is when the engine comes on, it auto connects to whatever device you have it synced with, your iPhone, iPad, any USB de or any Bluetooth device. So I start the engine, it auto connects to the iPhone, and when it auto connects, it auto plays. So I start the engine, it starts playing my music over that FM frequency, which I can get from here. Uh, I can't test it now as I'm using my iPhone to film due to its LED and better macro focus than the flip, uh, but that's really cool, and that's the best way I have found uh, to be able to play your iPhone in the car. Something else I may do in the future is uh, replace this door sill. This is the only one that has this white mark here and a little bit there. Uh, the other ones are okay, so I don't know what that's about. Well, we're in here. Someday I'll probably replace these mats, most likely next spring. Um, as you can see, they've got a little bit of corrosion from salt. The carpets beneath them are perfect. Um, and as you can see here, the Velcro has... The Velcro sticks fine. It just doesn't stick to this. And Yes, I know, there's crap in here. I usually keep this thing spotless, but we have had uh, seven days straight of weather like this, so it's uh, virtually impossible for me to keep this thing clean how I want to. One of the problems I had with this car immediately when I got it, whenever I put the driver's window down and it was over, uh, say, 70 degrees, it would squeak ridiculously loud, and I've heard that's a fairly common problem. I ended up taking it to Jeff's Motor Cars in Canton, Ohio. They opened the door up for $110, lubed everything, put it back together. It's been quiet ever since. So uh, if you've got that problem, don't worry about it. It is uh, not really expensive, but uh, being a BMW, you are going to have to open your wallet. Back seat, might as well just take a little peek in here. Get the light back on. Pretty clean. Don't have a whole lot of people ride back here. 
Uh, I can't really think of much to say. I, that squeak that most E39s have here in the rear deck, uh, driving it with the windows open today, it's starting to drive me crazy. So, uh, anybody know anything about that? You can see the trim back here is in pretty perfect condition, um, as well as the door handles. Everything is pretty clean. I don't think anybody really ever rode back there, the previous owner. The rear wheels have been refinished, um, not under my ownership. The previous owner refinished them. So uh, the rear ones are pretty good, or the rear ones are just about perfect. It's the front ones I am going to have to deal with. Maybe in the spring, maybe I'll just have those refinished or something like that. Had new brake rotors put on um, mid-summer 2011, as well as pads back here, and brake shoes. I know that the parking brake on these E39s is miserable, not only because the handle wears off, um, the finish on the handle, rather, but they're not strong at all. Um, the shoes that they use, it's not a manual trip to the rear discs, um, the rear calipers like it should be. Uh, so I had to have new shoes put in the rear and uh, that has fixed that problem for now. You can kind of see what I'm talking about up here with the front wheel. There's a little bit of, uh, I don't know if it's pitting or what's going on around there. Then somebody didn't know how to mount a tire. And uh, I ordered new front rotors today from Turner Motorsport. They are uh, slotted rotors and they should be here Later this week, that'll probably be another video. I'll show you what those look like and everything. Maybe we'll do a little unboxing or something. But these are in pretty bad shape. I had new pads put on not too long ago. And I was going to do the rotors then, but finances didn't allow, so doing that now. And I don't know if you noticed a minute ago, but I have four new tires on here. These are Michelin Pilot Sports, whatever the... Well, actually, they're the All Season Plus, and uh, they're pretty good in the rain. And I have not driven these particular tires in the snow, but I did drive the previous tires, which were the same tires, obviously just significantly more worn, in the snow. And quite honestly, they weren't bad. 394 horsepower to the rear wheels. Well, when new. Um, you know, if you were easy on it, obviously leave your traction system on. It was no problem. The headlights are the European uh, clear glass lights. So uh, I'm pretty happy with them. They're just halogen bulbs I saw on, on eBay. There was a place where I could actually find xenon uh, fog lights, and I thought that would look cool, but I, I'd try to keep this as close to OEM as possible. I also replaced these grills up here. I just got them off eBay. I think they were about 90 bucks. I had those put in when I redid the hood. I had tons of stone chips up here at one point. Now there are no stone chips. This was um, stone chipped as well after this kind of miles, and most of them were highway. Uh, you can imagine the stone chips, but uh, now all that's been done. So really, uh, during my ownership, we've had the entire front end redone, four tires, uh, some minor things inside, uh, but it's, it's been good. That reminds me, another thing I had done, or actually did myself, this park distance control here on the rear of the vehicle didn't work. So every time I put it in reverse, for about two seconds there was a loud, solid beep, which got to be annoying, and I realized that that was the system telling me that it wasn't working. One of the sensors was bad. Here's the belly of the beast. I really haven't done a whole lot in here. Aside from replacing the cabin filter, uh, or the cabin air filters, which are these boxes here. Uh, again, this is all on the M5. Let me go ahead and turn my light back on. Um, obviously, I'm working with an M5. My dad had a 2003 530 years ago. I didn't really know a whole lot about cars at that point, so I can't tell you a whole lot about it. Aside from that, and replacing oil and putting a quart in every 700 miles, um, I, I haven't done a whole lot under the hood. I've detailed it. Everything is pretty clean. Um, you know, it, it, my, my way of thinking is this is not a show car, but this is a car I would like to have a really long time, so I want to keep it clean, I want to keep it as nice as possible, um, you know, living within the limits. It has to be driven in the winter, it has to be driven in the snow, or for the, in the rain, at least for the next two years while I live here. Well guys, welcome to the channel. I really hope that uh, we can build this into something. If you have anything about the car that you see that you'd like to see me make a video about, I'll definitely do it. Uh, just let me know. I apologize for the terrible camera work. I know uh, I'm not exactly in the best conditions here. I would have loved to have do this to have done this on a nice day, but uh, that's not what we've been given here today. But I've got those rotors coming and the e-brake, so there's at least two videos. Uh, I will upload that parking sensor video again, and I'll show you how to do that. That was easy. Thank you so much for watching this video. As I said a minute ago, I really hope we can turn this channel into a, a forum or a board where we can discuss things about these cars while they're still here and maybe we can all learn something if nothing else uh, that'd be pretty cool so I plan to do a couple more things with this car over the winter I really want to find that interior trim I'll do something with the wheels in the spring maybe um, but aside from that I'm open to any suggestions and things I could do to improve it and uh, I'm 
hope that you guys find something with mine that maybe you can improve with yours. So thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe and stay tuned uh, for the next one that I'll try to have up in a few days. Again, thank you.